You can't make a poop knife. <laughs> you can't make a knife out of poop. Apparently, in ethnography, there is a very influential story of an Inuit man who found himself stranded in an icy wilderness and he needed to get some meat off of one of his animals that had unfortunately died, but he didn't have anything to cut that meat. And so, as the story goes, he pooped and then he used the freezing temperatures to make a knife out of poop. <laughs> it's a crazy story, and it sounds just crazy enough to work, but a team of researchers testing this theory actually did it to see if it would actually work. So what they did is gave themselves a couple different diets, an Inuit at that time diet and a normal Western diet, and then they pooped, and then they put that poop in molds, and then they froze it into different blade shapes, and they tried to cut some meat. And you know what happened? It didn't cut the meat at all. It just smeared on the meat. <laughs> it just goes to show you, until you test something, it might be full of shit. Welcome to another edition of Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I look back on the previous video on this channel and take all of your comments, questions, and corrections and apply a sharper than poop blade of science to them. And then I tell you what's coming up next on this channel. Hint, I call them up on this here not evil phone all the time. But getting right down to it in the last episode of Because Science, we are trying to figure out what's actually inside a Dragon Ball Z sensu bean. I said that given the properties of a sensu bean in the anime, in the manga, it might have chemically maybe some morphine, maybe some caffeine, and maybe the constituents, chemically speaking, of the greater plantain in there. Ooh. But what did you have to say? Oh, every day we stray further from God. Scotty Needs It says, Sensu beans are made of stem cells, heroin, crystal meth, and all the steroids. I'm gonna be honest. Didn't have a response thought out for this one. I think you're probably on the right track with some of these, but uh, crystal meth is probably a little much, don't you think? It's like, Cell, I have to defeat you because I'm Goku versus, I gotta defeat you, man! very different attitudes. Our next comment comes from my name, who kind of gets at the same point. Uh, it would be a mix of uppers, downers, and healing properties. Yep, those would definitely be massively illegal. That is actually an interesting question. Would sensu beans be illegal if they were real things? They have intense healing properties, they have incredible pain relieving properties, and they can make you feel crazy energized and ready to feed an eggplant purple and white space alien who kind of talks like this. Kind of like a space stewie. Hey there, Kakarot. That's impossible. You can't do the thing. That's how Frieza sounds. But would sensu beans be illegal? I'm guessing that you wouldn't be able to get sensu beans over the counter, and you can quote me on that. But sensu beans seem to be powerful enough in their effects that in the real world, some kind of agency would have to regulate beans in a real way, or else they could be misused and abused like some of our most powerful drugs. So yeah, I think sensu beans would be illegal and or used as parts of scientific study. Say, you could study a sensu bean one day, and then uh, you know, for fighting tactics, you could study uh, poop knives. Poop knife! Kaiser asks, would pain relief be of any importance, really, in a bean designed to heal wounds within seconds? That's interesting. Well, I think we can actually make the distinction between wound healing and pain. Because as you may know, just with experience in your day-to-day -day lives, getting an injury doesn't necessarily equate to having pain. You can be cut in such a way that you don't feel pain, for example, or you can feel pain where you don't have any grievous anime style, you know, slash wound that you could make with like a poop knife or something like that. I mean, I mean, imagine getting bitten by a piranha. I hear that piranha's teeth are so sharp that you can have a chunk of flesh torn out of you like uh, you're being cookie cuttered and you do not even feel it. You can have an injury without having the pain associated with it and you can have chronic pain. Some people have chronic pain disorders without having you know, a big puncture wound or something like that. So I think in this case, we can separate out wound healing and pain and have sensu beans address both of those things. Our next comment comes from Jeff F who says, there's a problem with sensu beans regenerating, say lost limbs or huge injuries very, very quickly because that energy and that material has to come from somewhere. 
If you go way back to when Because Science was on the Nerdist channel, we actually talked about this kind of thing. When we were talking about cutting Deadpool in half or decapitating Deadpool, when you heal something like uh, a lost arm, if you were an axolotl or even a lost head, something like that, those materials would have to come from your own body. That energy, those chemicals, those would have to be repurposed from old cells, they'd have to migrate to the wound site, and they'd have to re-differentiate into what you would need. Basically, you don't just get mass from nowhere. You're not the Hulk. I don't buy that explanation. And so Jeff points out, as some super nerds do, which we'll get to in a little bit, sensu beans would have to be incredibly dense with material to provide some material to heal these wounds quickly, or else they'd just like explode with energy, as Jeff states, and that'd be bad. It's like swallowing a grenade. Yeah, hey, it's me. Sorry, hello, how was your day? Tickets? On the 15th? Yeah, I can do that. Oh, that'll be nice. Yeah, I just came up with a new idea. Gut grenades. You swallow tiny grenades in cereal and then they blow up Cheerios. More like Cheerio to your life. <laughs> okay, I love you, bye. Oh, sorry, I was just buying children's cereal via Postmates on the phone? Yeah. But the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this video, I have to give to frequent commenter Stefan Merchant, who says, not the guy from The Office, a, a different one, a super nerd. Stefan Merchant, who says, I've always thought that sensu beans operate by altering time and being ridiculously calorie dense. The lore says that a sensu bean can keep you full for a full 10 days, we'll get to that, which equates to about 20 to 25 kilocalories, thousands of calories, which is about the same as seven pounds of fat or eating 14 pounds of sugar. Wow. Stefan goes on to talk about how a sensu bean might be able to deliver this amount of energy, but for calculating that, just think about that. Seven pounds of fat in something that's this big. It would be the most calorie dense thing, probably, and one of the great advancements of the 21st, the 20th, and the 21st century is, like it or not, fast food, food that is very, very calorie dense. So you can get a lot of calories for cheap, even though it has led to, you know, problems with diet and public health and that kind of thing. Just as an innovation, squeezing as many calories as possible into the smallest possible area is a huge advancement for humans. You don't have to eat nearly as much or spend nearly as much money to get the same amount of calories. So a sensu bean would be the absolute epitome of that, and you could probably buy it at Mikadaz. <laughs> What am I doing? For thinking about all of this and saying, hey, love the show, thanks for the thought experiments, you know what? You're welcome, and I reward you with a super nerd status. I don't know where to put my hands. But, of course, I am not always right, and when I am wrong, those are some serious pick a low points for me. <laughs> so what did I get wrong last week? Not that pun, I'll tell you. Our first correction comes from Dunrick Modimer and David Kraft and others who all say, hey, Kyle, you forgot something about them beans. Canonically, a sensu bean has so much uh, caloric goodness to it that it can leave a person full after eating a sensu bean for 10 days. Well, first I'll say that I left out the keep a person full for 10 days part of a sensu bean because it wasn't really the main part of what made a sensu bean so amazing. Yes, it had that effect, and yes, characters had upset stomach from eating too many sensu beans and the like, but when you eat a sensu bean, the main effect is to heal your wounds during a fight and to advance that fighting storyline along. I focused on the pain mitigation and the healing because I think that's what a sensu bean is mostly about, and the keep a person full is kind of ancillary to that. But for a full correction, I'll actually give it to another commenter, Austin K. Austin K says that a sensu bean would have to have 20,000 calories, as previous comments had said. For reference, the average lima bean has just four calories, so an enormous increase. This is without mentioning the fact that a sensu bean would have to somehow digest so slowly that it could release these calories over such a long period of time and still make you feel full. That's an important point, because right now, you could go out and eat a couple jars of mayonnaise and get 20,000 calories in one sitting, but it wouldn't all stay with you and keep you 
full. In fact, it would probably leave you, and then you could make a knife. But, <laughs> but Austin, <laughs> Austin, it always comes back to the poop knife. And then Austin says, talk about a lot of fiber. It would presumably also require all the macronutrients and vitamins a person would need for 10 days. That's a lot of requirements for a sensu bean. Either way, I love the show. I've been watching for years, and I tend to watch for many more. <laughs> well, I intend to be alive for many more years, so who knows what's going to happen. Yeah. Start looking into fecal falchions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. BM blades. Poop pole axes. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Travis has a correction and they say something that you kind of glossed over with the healing factor is that the people who are healed never have any scar tissue. Not once. Chris probably doesn't sound like that. Because of this, I believe that Sensu Bean does not accelerate healing, but in fact magically repairs material. No, nah. -uh. Not on this program, not magical. So if a sensu bean heals a fighter to such a degree that they never have scar tissue, something else must be going on. Any kind of cut that you or I get is going to necessarily leave scar tissue because we do not have full tissue regeneration abilities, at least not when we're adults. Some babies can regrow like the tip of their finger or something like that if it's unfortunately cut off somewhere. Anyway, but if, don't look at me like that, it's true. But since many characters in the Dragon Ball Z-verse are not human, maybe they have some other biology going on. Like I've mentioned before, the sort of Ur regenerator, the best regenerator that we know of, at least one of them, is the axolotl, the Mexican cave salamander, and it can regrow entire limbs any number of times, even its eye, parts of its brain, parts of its spine, with zero scar tissue, and that's because it has a perfect tissue regeneration process. So if a sensu bean could alter our genetics, this would be a lot, mind you, but if it could and give us a genetic pathway similar to how axolotls regenerate their limbs, then maybe you could regenerate grievous injuries, general grievous injuries, I see you there, prequel memes, without any scar tissue on some of these DBZ fighters. That might be possible. It's more possible than magic, because everything is. Everything is more possible than magic by default and I'll sit by that. Another correction comes from Odin's Raven Huggin, who says, interesting episode. However, there is one thing I must correct you on. Morphine makes you sleepy. So having morphine or an opioid derivative as a component would make the product inherently a downer. The amount of caffeine you need to put in to counteract this and give a fighter energy to fight would be massive. Aspirin, on the other hand, which can be derived from willow bark, can be more effective as it doesn't have the drowsy side effect on the body. That is a good point, Odin's Raven. So we are just kind of putting in chemicals that had these effects into a sensu bean without really considering the full implications of how all those chemicals would totally interact with each other. I'm not a pharmacologist. I'm not sure how all of this chemistry would work together, but this was just my suggestion. I take your point though. A powerful version of aspirin that wouldn't make a fighter drowsy like morphine inevitably would, would probably be better, but morphine would be much better at making say, you know, a finger laser blown through your chest feel a bit better. But the nerdiest correction at the time I'm filming this episode, I gotta give to Arthur E. King, 8472, who's already a one-time super nerd, who says, so much it fills up this whole screen. But what Arthur is getting at is, if a sensu bean has to have enough calories to satiate someone for 10 days, then think about how much a sensu bean would actually weigh. Arthur does a lot of math on their own to calculate how many grams of fat and protein would have to be in this bean, how many nutrients, how many chemicals would need to be in the bean, and then gets masses for all of that and puts it all together and finds that a single sensu bean would have to be over half a pound. <laughs> This would have to be over half a pound. It would feel absolutely bizarre in your hand, way too heavy for what it should be. And it might be so dense, therefore, that when you try to bite it, you can't. Way too dense. I did not even think about that complication, Arthur, and I think it's incredibly smart that you pointed it out. So for that, you are now a two-time super nerd. Ah, take them. They're yours. You think I'm gonna waste a bean? Uh-uh. But moving right along to this week's episode of Because Science. This week on this channel, we are exploring the science of Project Thor. That's right, in this week's episode of Because Science, we are looking into one of the most famous, almost developed and implemented space weapons of all time, Project Thor. You may have heard about it in some of the most famous science fiction novels of all time, but what really was the orbital striker that was Project Thor? How much damage could it theoretically cause? How much would it cost? How feasible would this orbital weapon system really be? We get into it 
But before we get to the rods from God, please go watch the latest episode of Because Science if you haven't yet, all about sensu beans and what might actually be in them, and leave me all of your best, nerdiest comments, corrections, and questions, because yes, I still do check and look at facebook.com slash because science, youtube.com slash because science, and at because science on Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget, Poop knives actually validate my Mortal Kombat ice axe argument, which is when you have a material that's not good in tension or compression and is frozen and you can't hold an edge because that edge is very brittle and it melts very quickly, as they say in the paper. That's why you cannot make uh, an axe out of ice or poop. I mean, an ice axe wouldn't be my first choice. A poop knife would definitely be number two for me.